play. We saw that last point, Saginaw Valley with only one player remaining against, I believe, nine or ten players from uh, Grand Valley decided to just walk out, give that second point to Grand Valley, and is going to try to make up those two points here. This is going to be a tremendous uphill struggle for Saginaw uh, to try to win this. I think what they did there was the smart move, but they have to understand that getting two points from Grand Valley, uh, you know, seven point or seven minutes a point is just not something that happens very often. So, one, we're, I'm gonna, I'm thinking it's gonna be a couple of minutes of this back and forth, and then Saginaw is just gonna have to go for it. They're gonna have to start playing a super aggressive game uh, if they have any hope of tying this up. Over on court number two, it looks like it's like maybe eight or nine players in for Central Michigan. I can't see. It's just okay. I'm having trouble keeping up with that one. There's a lot going on over there. I'll update again in a few minutes. The court, st score, pardon me, score over there still stands at 1-1. About six and a half minutes left here with Saginaw versus Grand Valley. 13 minutes and 20 seconds left. Grand Valley up two to Saginaw zero. Number 37 for Saginaw Valley, Gravetti calling for his team to move forward. Oh, wow. So they got one player out there, but then a catch makes that kill basically pointless. And there goes number 37, Gravetti, taking two to the chest. So he's on his way out. Let's see, number seven, Sheridan, I believe, for Grand Valley, trying to jump, but they anticipated that jump, caught him right in the knees. So, comment from Spencer Jardine. G uh, Grand Valley playing just too strong right now. Hell of a run by Saginaw Valley, though. Hardly played all year and still made it back to the Final Four. Our thoughts exactly. Uh, coming into this tournament, obviously these were the two, two of the you know probably top three or four teams on everyone's mind. Uh, the seeding obviously backed that up. Uh, and so th this matchup should come as no surprise to anybody. And, uh, you know, uh, I did have a chance to talk to Saginaw Valley and Grand Valley before this game, and that was something that Saginaw mentioned is uh, having a relatively light season this year compared to in the past as they haven't had quite as many games as they would have liked. Number 12 for Saginaw taking a pretty big hit to the chest. Moving out. Crawling off crawling off the court. Sometimes you gotta crawl before you can walk. I don't know, oh, it's been a really long day. Burr. Yes, uh, JMU, CMU still 1-1, absolutely. Uh, it's just, it's a slow going game, that's for sure. Let me hop over there real quick and try to get you a player count. All right, so just went over and had a look. 13 players in for JMU, eight players in for Central Michigan. Four minutes and 25 seconds left in that game, tied at one to one. So I'd say pretty likely that we'll see that game go into overtime. And just like we said before, overtime, each team picks their best six players, 10 balls on the court, and you go until there is but one winner, I suppose. Until there is only one Highlander. Yeah, there can only be one Highlander. What an old, outdated reference. 
Excellent block by number 99. Oh, and an excellent dodge. Excellent dodge by number 99, Salinas. That was fantastic. Excellent, excellent dodge, excellent throw, then another excellent dodge. Over in the other court, JMU taking a hard offensive stance, doing everything they can to try to finish this game in the last three minutes and 30 seconds before overtime becomes necessary. Grand Valley with the ball advantage and the player advantage. Number 11, nice block. Double block for number 55, Hoffman for Saginaw Valley, and he's pushing up on the left. One throw to reset the clock. Saginaw Valley, with only four players left, is on the 10-second shot clock, giving yet another big advantage to Grand Valley. Couple of the referees disagreeing there on uh, if it hit was out. Uh, head referee Zygmunt Maloney making the final call on number 55 Hoffman, saying in fact he was out. So that puts Grand Valley down to three players remaining. Eight minutes left in the game. Now. Uh, Three players left in for Saginaw Valley. Seven players left in for Grand Valley. One minute and 50 seconds left in the Central Michigan JMU game. Again, 99% sure that that game is going to go in overtime. So depending on how this match is going, we'll keep you updated on that. Uh, feel free to swap over to the other stream uh, being presented by Jazzy Josh Raymer if you want to see that in the impending uh, overtime that I think is on its way. Oh, number 56 for Saginaw Valley. Trying to make a catch, but couldn't hold on to it. Two players left in, number 99, Salinas, and number 20 or 23. I'm sorry, I can't see the back of his jersey. It looks like 23. Salinas trying to make a catch, can't do it, meaning one player remaining for Saginaw Valley. Number 23, Kraus. Okay, went ahead and threw his ball away. He, I mean, he obviously understands that catches are the only thing that is going to give Saginaw Valley a chance in this game. We're going to try to follow Kraus for the remainder of this point. Grand Valley being careful. Okay. So Zygmunt's calling the hit on Kraus. So that is going to give another point to Grand Valley. That puts Grand Valley up three to nothing against Saginaw. That pretty much seals the deal, I think, Ben. So we will wait and see. We've got six minutes left. We'll be back for the next point. Uh, we'll see what these two teams decide to do. I think and, they're finishing up. All right. I don't think they're going to do it. 